So now we gave you a bit of uh, like a few building blocks that are going to be useful to process towards consensus. But uh, stepping back a little bit, let's see what we are trying to do here with this gossip graph. So this is kind of a record of history. And uh, what we want to do is order things that happened in the network. And so the most primitive way of ordering things that happened on the network is to pick the next one. Um, and things that happened in the network are somehow recorded in this graph, for instance, through observations. Um, so if you remember, the gossip events can have a field that's an observation. Like we said, for instance, B0 could have the observation that it has uh, seen Frank asking to enter the network. Uh, so we are reducing the problem of um, agreeing on some arbitrary thing to let's agree what's the next gossip event we are considering so that based on its content, we can uh, agree on some arbitrary thing in the world. Um, so uh, an easy way to define an interesting event would be an event that contains an observation. And that's the way you can do it. Uh, we are writing Parsec in an agnostic way to what you call as an interesting event. So you could do this. Uh, what we do is that we only reach consensus on a gossip event that sees a supermajority of uh, observations for the same payload, because this allows to do it a bit less often, but that's a detail, it doesn't really matter. So if it's simpler, you can just consider an interesting event contains an observation. And so instead of ordering arbitrary observations, we're going to order gossip events, and then it's going to map one to one to an observation. Um, so let's consider here, for instance, that uh, A0, B0, C0, and D0 are all interesting events. And so our job is to pick the next one. If we can pick the next one, we are creating an order, because you can just repeat this operation, and you're good. Uh, so we can define the concept of observer. An observer is another gossip event that has a special property relating to interesting events. So an observer strongly see interesting events created by a supermajority of the nodes. Uh, so maybe it sounds a bit abstract, but um, the, the property we want from this is that once someone is an observer, then no, for every interesting event that they strongly see, they know that it will propagate. That's a property of gossip. It is kind of past the point of no return. That's what Bart was saying. Like Even if someone was trying to do a fork, that would not hide the fact, or at least it wouldn't overtake uh, the right fork of the network. So, uh, it, so this is a property we're looking for. But now let's go through an example just to, to visualize it. So we already saw that A2 doesn't strongly see A0, because uh, if you draw the path, they only cover Alice and Bob. However, A2 strongly sees B0. A2 strongly sees C0, and A2 strongly sees D0. So A2 strongly sees three out of the four, or, or at least strongly sees interesting events created by three different nodes, which is a supermajority. So in this example, the event A2 is an observer. Um, so once we've defined this concept of observer, uh, a gossip event being an observer or something means that the, well, we can trust that this interesting event will propagate in the network. Uh, and so what we can do is a meta election. So all these, uh, well, interesting events, it's something we assign, meaning we assign to the event after the fact. Uh, same with observer. And everything that we are going to cover now like we say, meta election, because all of this is meaning we assign two events in addition to the simple uh, tree structure that we created. Um, so now let's consider, so this is just a different scenario. We are not uh, following on from the previous slide. It's so everything fits in a slide and we don't have to grow the graph forever. So let's say that A0, B0, C0, and D0 now are all observers. So that means that each of them, they are like further down the graph, they are interesting events. And each of them uh, strongly sees interesting events created by a supermajority of nodes. Um, so these observers, uh, well, we can see that as God view, that they're holding a meta election where 
each of them says for each node, if I strongly see an interesting event created by this node, I vote that we consider that gossip event in the candidates for the next gossip event. Uh, so uh, giving an example with colors, let's say green is true, orange is false. So, and then let's say that these are all observers and we're asking the question, should we consider Alice's event in particular? So we are going to do that for each node, but right now let's just consider Alice's event. So basically the question is, at A0, which is the first observer from Alice, has this event strongly seen the interesting event from Alice? And the answer say is yes, for instance. And then at B0, the answer is no. At C0, the answer is no. And at D0, the answer is yes. Uh, so focusing just on Alice, everyone will agree, okay, uh, so, so somehow we need to go from this to everyone agreeing on this yes or no result, but let's say we can do that. Then if we can, uh, this reduces the problem of, well, say everyone knows, says yes, we should listen to Alice, then everyone will consider Alice's interesting event in the short list. And if you do that for Bob, Carol, and Dave as well, then let's say we end up trusting Alice, Bob, not Carol, but Dave, then we have three of them, and we can easily just pick, uh, for instance, the highest of the, the gossip events proposed by these three nodes. So if we agree on the set of nodes to trust, we have solved the problem. Now there is a big leap in this, which is uh, going from there to agreeing on this but it's a smaller leap than full Byzantine consensus because these are binary values. And so it's binary Byzantine consensus. Uh, so this problem is simpler to solve and has a very good solution that we are using and so that's uh, how we go there. Uh, so that solution is by Mostefari and Reynal uh, in a paper called, mm, I don't remember, signature free asynchronous Byzantine consensus with t lower than n divided by three and order of n squared messages. Uh, the n squared messages is because they do it in the context of broadcast, but we port everything to gossip, which means for us it's n log n. Um, so one key part of um, this paper is filtering out binary values proposed by malicious nodes. And that's a, a process called the binary value gossip. So the idea is we start with a vote like this and we're going to do a little procedure at the end of which we know we, we can have uh, binary values. We can have either true, false or true and false. Each node can have any of these combinations. But what you know is that if you have anything in your binary values, it was originally in the estimates of over a third of the nodes. So uh, now I'm going to, disc to di explain this binary value gossip with an example. Uh, so it's the same situation as before. I just removed the observers icon. So we all know the observers, but uh, so the bottom left uh, value of each circle represents the original estimate they had. And they can acquire a new estimate. We'll see how. But if they do, it's going to go in the bottom right uh, place in the circle. Then the, the output of this is binary values. And we are representing them in the two uh, quadrants, top left and, but, uh, top, left and top right. Uh, and so we are going to say that the first one is in the top left and the second one is in the top right. So the, the rules of the game are pretty easy. If I see over a third estimates that are not the one that's already my estimate, I'll add it to my set of estimates. Uh, and then if I see two thirds, so a super majority of um, estimates that agree, then that's going to be in my binary values. So let's do this game. Uh, so B1. B1 sees B0 and A0. So it that it sees, so okay, it also you keep the estimate from your parent, from your self-parent. So B1 keeps the estimate from its self-parent, but it doesn't see a third or more of uh, true. So it's got false, but not true in its estimates. Uh, let's look at another one. 
uh, let's look at A1. So A1 is different because it can see B0 and C0, which carry an estimate for fa false. So it started with uh, true in its estimate because that's what its self front had. And then it could see a third of disagreeing estimates, so it added it to its estimates. Uh, and then at this point, it can see three estimates for false. So false makes it to its bin value. So the top left quadrant, its first binary value, is uh, no false. Uh, it doesn't have true there because it can't see two thirds of true, for instance. Uh, picking another one, C1 is not that interesting either because it doesn't see much. Uh, it can see over a third of false, but false was already in its estimate, so it doesn't change anything. Um, now let's say B2, B2 can see, so it keeps the false estimate from before, and now it can see both A0 and D0, which means that's a third of disagreeing estimates, so that makes it to its estimates, and so that makes it two thirds, so it goes to its bin values. Uh, the reason this is happening here, like when as soon as it makes it to the estimates, it makes it to the bin values, is just a property of having only four nodes because a third plus one is greater to two thirds. Uh, but yeah, never mind. In a real network, it could take a bit longer, but this is slides. Um, okay, other example, it's the exact same one, so trust me. Uh, and this one is a bit more interesting because at the same time, we go from D0 having no binary value to D1 having both binary values. Um, and so, so you can see why, because uh, it can see basically everything. So it can see definitely a third of each type and so two thirds of each type. Uh, and in that case, by convention, we put true first. So the, the top left quadrant is green, not the top right quadrant. It's a convention. Uh, and now doing the last one, uh, this one picks the binary value false from before, so that's in its first binary value, and the second binary value uh, is green, so is true. Okay, so w we did this game. The reason I brought your attention to the order in the top left quadrant is because that value is special. Uh, it's, we call it the auxiliary value. So the first value that to make it to the set of binary values is the auxiliary value. And we can go from there to consensus. But before we go there, just explaining what this did, what we ended up with this output, is we filtered um, values that were pr offered by less than a third voters. So here, we started with a tie situation with two false, two true. And so anything could happen, any, like in, anyone eventually would get true and false in any order in the in their bin values. But if there had been only Bob proposing false and Carol had also proposed true, then Bob's value would never have propagated because you would never um, see a third of these values, which means that if only dishonest nodes propose a value and everyone else is kind of in agreement in principle before, then the um, the bad actors won't be able to influence the outcome of this process. Uh, so, well, the, it's what these slides say. Uh, so let's just skip this. Um, now, how to go from these auxiliary values to a, a binary decision is a process called the common coin, and I'll let Bart uh, tell you about this. Yeah. 